Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love Equinox. Inflation is the general rising of prices over time. As the economy grows over the course of one year, some degree of inflation is natural. But excessive inflation can hurt consumers and other participants in the aggregate economy. So why is inflation so harmful? Rising prices weaken consumer purchasing power. Because as goods and services become more expensive, consumers can't buy as much as they used to with every dollar of disposable income they have. Essentially, inflation turns dollars into cents. With less purchasing power, consumers will find it harder to buy the same quantity of goods and services they normally buy, meaning the economy will eventually contract and utility will not be maximized. We measure changes in price level in the economy with the inflation rate. To calculate the inflation rate, we must first calculate the value of something called the market basket. The market basket is a sampling of the most commonly purchased consumer goods and services in the aggregate economy year to year. It usually includes goods like bread, eggs, milk, and other items bought by consumers on a regular basis. To find its value, the price of every good is added together to find the sum value of the market basket of consumer goods and services in the current year. For example, to find the market basket for 2016, we would take the price of every item included in the market basket in 2016 and add them together, giving us the sum market basket value. In this case, when adding together the price of bread, eggs, and milk in 2016. The 2016 market basket value in the United States is $10. The inflation rate is calculated by finding the difference in the same market basket sample between two years, and then dividing it by the sum value of the market basket in the base year of comparison. For example, if the 2016 market basket value in the United States is $10, and the same market basket totals $12 in 2017, we can conclude that prices increased in the United States by 20% between 2016 and 2017. The inflation rate illustrates the percentage increase or decrease in prices of goods and services in the aggregate economy in a given year. Of course, prices can decrease over time as well. This is called deflation, and it can increase consumer purchasing power. As goods and services become less expensive, consumers are able to buy more with every dollar of disposable income they have making it easier for consumers to maximize their utility. We can determine the degree of deflation in the aggregate economy through the inflation rate as well. For example, if the 2016 market basket value in the United States is $10, and the same market basket totals $9 in 2017, we can conclude that prices decreased in the United States by 10% between 2016 and 2017. Economists agree that an annual inflation rate of 2% is considered healthy and optimal. When inflation rises at a rate higher than expected, some economic participants are hurt and others are helped by the rising price level. For example, banks and other money lenders who loan money at fixed interest rates are hurt by excessive inflation. When lenders loan money, they expect to be paid back with money that has the same value as when they lent it. However, inflation destroys the purchasing power of money. And if the money they loan doesn't collect interest as prices rise, they will be paid back with money that has lost value and has less purchasing power as when they lent it. If you lend your friend $100 at 0% interest, and they pay you back a year later after prices have risen by 4%, your $100 buys less than it did a year ago. 4% less to be exact. You lent your friend $100, but you got back $96 of purchasing power. Sucks to be you. Consumers who live on a fixed income are also hurt by excessive inflation. Retirees are a great example. When you retire, the only disposable income you have is the money that you've saved for retirement, and so you live on a fixed income year to year. As inflation occurs, your disposable income remains the same, and every dollar you have buys less goods and services as prices rise. Grandpa's getting gypped. Savers are also hurt by excessive inflation. Because even money stored for future use loses value and purchasing power as prices rise in the economy. Saving your money under the mattress or in a piggy bank means your money doesn't collect interest. So every percent of inflation over time causes the value of your disposable income to decrease. Even savers who store their money in a bank account or an investment see the value of their money decrease if inflation rises at a rate that is higher than expected. 
For example, if you save $1,000 in a savings account and that account pays a 2% interest rate annually, the interest rate counteracts the destructive power of inflation as long as inflation is 2% over the course of that year. However, if inflation is 4% over the course of that year, you actually lost 2% purchasing power because the interest rate you earned on your $1,000 savings did not match the actual inflation rate. A penny saved is a penny lost. It is when you don't account for inflation. Inflation can actually help certain participants in the macro economy. For example, debtors or borrowers are actually helped by inflation. When borrowing money, you are borrowing the purchasing power of money that you are lent. When inflation occurs, the money you have borrowed loses value. And when you pay it back, it's worth less than when you borrowed it, making it easier to pay it back to the lender. You may have borrowed and spent $100, but if 5% inflation occurs over one year, you're repaying the lender $95 of purchasing power. You moocher. Inflation also helps firms when product prices rise faster than resource prices. If product prices rise by 4% and resource costs increase by only 2% over the same time, then revenue is increasing at a rate that is faster than cost, meaning profits are increasing for firms across the market. There's one group of participants who are neither hurt nor helped by inflation. This group are workers who have a salary or pension with a cost of living adjustment, also known as a COLA. A cost of living adjustment is usually negotiated into a contract, meaning workers who have a cost of living adjustment usually belong to strong labor unions. Workers and firms will negotiate salaries over the course of one year and will factor in projected inflation rates. When the time comes to negotiate a new salary for the following year, workers and firms will sit down and evaluate the actual inflation rate. If the inflation rate was higher than what was projected in the previous year, workers will receive an adjustment to their salary compensating them for the increase in prices that was unexpected. This neutralizes the destructive effect of inflation and reimburses workers for the extra cost of living in the previous year. So why do prices increase across the aggregate economy? There are three causes of inflation. The first is called the quantity theory of inflation. Think Germany after World War I. When the government prints too much money, it causes the value of every dollar to dramatically decrease. As a result, it now takes more dollars to buy goods and services in the economy. This means prices rise, causing inflation. For example, let's say the dollar loses half of its value because the government prints too much money and there's too much printed currency and supply in the United States. Because every dollar is now worth 50 cents, prices would double to adjust for the decrease in the value of the dollar, causing a 100% inflation rate. The quantity theory can easily lead to a type of runaway inflation called hyperinflation. Hyperinflation is defined as a 200% inflation rate over the course of one fiscal year. Yikes. Conspiracy theorists claim that the Federal Reserve prints money recklessly to pay off our mounting national debt. But that is a myth we can debunk. Because if that were true, everyday items in the U.S. economy would cost double or triple what they did 5 or 10 years ago. Or the U.S. would experience hyperinflation. We're nowhere close to that. So you can officially tell your uncle he's crazy. The second cause of inflation is demand pool inflation. Demand pool inflation occurs when consumerism heats up and increased consumer demand for goods and services causes prices to rise across the economy. This type of inflation is common around the holiday season. As consumers rush to buy the most popular toys and gadgets, the price of those goods rise as they are in high demand. Soon, these goods are hard to find as quantity supply dwindles until firms are willing and able to supply a greater quantity at the higher demand-driven prices. During the 2016 holiday season, a remake of the original Nintendo game system cost $49 originally online. By the time the season was over, that price had skyrocketed to $499. Oh my gosh, totally worth it though. The third cause of inflation is cost push inflation. Cost push inflation occurs when resource prices rise in the factor market, leading to higher costs for firms. As production costs rise, it leads to a decrease in the supply of goods and services across the aggregate economy, as firms attempt to avoid higher costs by scaling back production. This leads to an increase in prices as goods and services are in short supply and are now harder to find. For example, if the price of labor were to increase, this would mean firms must now pay a higher wage to each worker in order to maintain production levels. However, to avoid these costs and maintain profits, firms will likely let workers go and scale back their production thus decreasing supply and causing inflation across the economy. However, 
If firms were to oblige workers and increase their wages instead of firing them, it would still lead to cost push inflation, as firms must now increase prices in the product market to pay for the wage increases for workers. In turn, workers will now ask for another wage increase to pay for the inflation of product prices, as they are now finding it difficult to meet their utility due to inflation in the product market. When wages are increased, firms will again increase prices to pay for the wage increase, and the cycle continues and continues and continues until prices are hyperinflated. This is a phenomenon called the wage price spiral, and it is a type of cost push inflation that will perpetually continue until checked in some way. And that's inflation. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on price indices and measuring inflation, or you can click here for my macro minute video on real and nominal data. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.